well, Coach, uh, day three of spring. How'd the guys look out there? It was good because we were in pads, you know, so it was a little more real football. Uh, we're pretty thin on the D-line. It's for so many kids, you know, that had to get some stuff fixed after the season, so that's always tough because we're so deep on the O-line, which is the total opposite of the entire season last year. We were deep on the D-line all season, uh, and we were so thin on the O-line. So it's just it's just the, the nuance of spring ball, trying to get everybody what they need. Um, we're a very veteran team in the line play because we had to play so many young old linemen last year, and those D linemen, when they get back, they'll be fine. So we're just trying to manage that. But it was fun to get out there and hear some pass popping and run around and play a little more real football. For a lack of a better term, like how, how hard can you guys go this spring with all the, the guys you got out? Are you just, just being extra cautious with it? Well, it's not. So we're going to go hard every time. We're never going to. You know, it's part of our culture pillar. It's going to be perfect effort. We're not going to minimize that. Uh, we're just going to be real, real selective on our rep count with our ones. Like, um, we usually go racks of four or racks of five. With our ones today, we went racks of two. Uh, you know, which they're all mad. Uh, but it's just it is what it is. We've got to see who our twos and threes are and get those kids uh, up to speed for depth purposes. We, we, we pretty much have a good sense of who our ones are because so many guys are coming back up front. Obviously, we lost Maka, but we feel really good about uh, Ernesto taking over that spot. And Luke Lopez has looked really good uh, at center as well. And then at guard, we played all of our guards at tackles last year just to get through the year. So those guys can easily come back in. We picked up Meech and we picked up you know, Makai, I mean, Maka, Makai yeah. back. So that's, we've got depth. And uh, we recruited two tackles in Buffalo and Daniel. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's just funny how last fall I was managing the O line the entire season and the D line's over there just deep as can be. And now we're managing another situation. I was looking at Buffalo and uh, Daniel, I guess, and man, they look pretty big in the pads today, don't they? Yeah, well, there's a reason they're the top two, you know, Zuko tackles, you know, in the country. They're light on their feet and they're big, long fellas. They just got to learn our system. But uh, really excited about Buffalo, Buffalo. And I call him Buffalo Soldier and Daniel Simon. That's, <laughs> that's the big nickname guy, big nickname guy. The only thing bad about that I've already learned this is when you do that all year, and then you go to media day, and people start asking you, you know, I'll never forget, uh, I remember Port Chop, you know, when I got here. Yeah. And he had like four nicknames. Yeah. And uh, I didn't even remember what his real name was. <laughs> and they were asking me about this kid I had. Talking about country, You're talking about pork chop. I mean, yeah, all those people, but didn't know his real name. <laughs> what were the advantages of moving Ernesto back to center? What does he bring to that position? Just a lot of time of doing it. We'd like to get Meech in there some. We'd like to get Mackay in there some, just for the for them at the next level. Uh, so we'll work those guys in there as well. I think Walker could be good at it too. Uh, you just got to snap them. And I've tried to share with those guys. I can't tell you how many guys that told me they were tackles. Didn't want to go in there and snap. It was like an insult. And uh, I had a kid, a gentleman named Davis Snow, one of the best offensive linemen I've ever coached, and never ever wanted to play center, and I always made him snap. And uh, him and Kurt Rowe, they're fighting because you know, David didn't want to snap. He goes to the U.S. Army All American game down here in San Antonio. All the centers get hurt. Coach asks if anybody ever played center before. David raised his hand. He'd never played in a game, but he had snapped until he played in practice. Gets out there in the Army All American game, NBC, looks great there. Uh, goes to the University of Texas, plays center and guard. Played for, I don't know, at least a handful of years in the National Football League interiorly, right, in the inside positions. So the more multiple you are in there, the better it is. Ernesto's played guard for us, he's played tackle for us, he's played center for us, and he just can play all the spots. And that's, that's a very valuable piece to this. Does his experience playing right tackle last year translate and help him now at center, or is it sort of a whole new set of skills? Uh, it's, it's a whole new set of skills, but it's it, it lets you know if, if you got to make a 5-0 call up there, he's going to be able to block, he's going to be able to single. Uh, he'll be fine on the singles because there's a lot of single blocks up there at tackle. Where at guard and center, you're a lot of combo blocks. You're getting some help from people. How comfortable is he with making those kind of calls? Is he still learning that, or how does that come together? No, nah, he's been playing for us as long as I've been here, so he's, he knows it very well. He's very intelligent. He's a good football player. He really bailed us out last year. I mean, 
Frankie was the you know the one that got all the attention, but Ernesto really did a heck of a job. But he got hurt so much. You know, while he was gone, that was a big loss, and we got him back there. Man, it's not a coincidence that you know we got a little better when he got back. Coach, what's the uh, I guess coaching dynamic between Kurt and and Coach Anderson? I guess how different is it from this time last year? Uh, it's just it's the same as far as responsibility. So uh, Kurt became Maddox, and Jerry became Kurt, and. Uh, but now Kurt is you know, more responsible for the, the run game coordination, whereas him and Matt worked in that. And Jared, you know, it's, 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 it's really semantics, honestly. It's just in case there ever was an argument, at least you know who's going to settle the argument because you put a title on that guy. But uh, I just don't work that way. I mean, it, it, and I know y'all don't like it that way. It's not good for the media per se because it's, it's a real collaborative effort here. And I know it's always, well, who's calling the play? and Who's doing that? And, we just don't see it that way. I mean, Jared's been an OC for years. Uh, he's coached every position on the offense. Um, he's an elite recruiter. Um, so he's going to be valued a lot in that, his input. And, and Kurt and I have done this a long time. This is year 34 for me, and I don't know how long for Kurt, but it's a minute. And uh, we, we understand that, you know, you gotta, you got to listen to people. you got to include people. I mean, collaboration is a big part of this. If you never take anybody's ideas, they're not going to give them to you anymore. Then you're coaching by yourself, and that's a bad, bad feeling, right? I've done it long enough. I'll let sometimes I'll let them do what they want to do just to watch them fail because it's their idea. I knew it wasn't going to work to begin with, but you got to let them. You got to let them learn themselves sometimes. That's a better way to learn than it is to never give them a chance. They're going to quit trying. So we we work collaboratively. I know it's a, a I know it's a very long answer to your question, uh, but I don't. I don't want to over. I don't want to overstate Kurt's importance and minimize Jared's importance. The biggest deal for me is why I move up within is for the players. It's. I, I want it to be a, a continuation of what they all know, uh, the way we handle them, the way we treat them, the expectations, the verbiage. Uh, so it's not like Jared's coming in doesn't know football. We all know football. We just have a certain way we do it. I mean, there's just a certain language we speak, there's a certain culture we have, and uh, I don't know if it was one of y'all had a clever bird talk or whatever y'all had it. Somebody had a nice little clever uh, way of how we communicate, and uh, more like bird chatter with me probably. But <laughs> yeah, that's their roles. Is there a reason you wanted to devote two assistant coaches to that position over any other? I've always done that. I just always felt like that was the position. Well, one, five elevenths of your offense is right there, and, and you know how we use our tight ends. That's really an extension of the O-line, right? And we play two tight ends quite a bit. So I just think that's where you need the most coaching. I think it's the most important position on the field as far as getting your kids coached. And I've done that as long as I've been a head coach. When we were at Old Gilmer, Texas, the, the first person to have an assistant was Kurt because uh, I always wanted four eyes on those six people. Uh, and I have a tight end coach as well. But let's be honest, I was a tight end coach. I mean, how much do you think I really went down there and worked on blocking? Uh, we were working down on every route there was in the world, right? And the, 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 the blocking wasn't as important to a tight end coach. And I'm not saying that Bert doesn't make them, that's not important to him. But I just know when you have a line coach involved with those tight ends, he ain't worried about no catching. And any tight end I've ever coached, they can catch. They all play basketball, they all play baseball, they can catch. Get them a good stance, ID in front, plus, minus, Ringo, Lucky, where's it all coming from? That's a lot of work. And we're going to play our tight ends. And we've recruited and developed some very good tight ends since we've been here. We're really proud of that. You guys are nearing the end of week one of spring practice. What have you liked that you've seen so far? And what do you hope to see when you all return from spring break? That, that, that's um, an easy one for me. With 17 kids coming in here and losing so many valuable members of our team last year, I was really worried about would there be a dip in our culture? What would our meetings be like? What would our practices be like? And I've seen nothing but the continuation, uh, you know, of our younger kids becoming older kids and our older kids now teaching the kids that just came in. Mm -hmm. That's been a beautiful thing to see. All the high school coaches that we've had in here, we've had quite a few Texas high school coaches in here. All of them to the man are like, you know, the way your kids listen, the way they take notes, the way at practice, they practice so hard, how they encourage each other, how they uh, teach each other 
uh, is like no other place they see. And we, we take great pride in our 210 triangle of toughness, culture, our brand. I put a tweet out this week. Uh, all those kids, they took those single digits off. I mean, Zakari Franklin back in 18, Josh Sevis back in 12, John Thomas Clark back in 88, Frank Harris back in 11, right? I mean, uh, Brandon Brown, I think he's back in 99. I mean, it's just those kids, man, we've got some special kids. In an era of transfer portal and IL, I hope everybody in San Antonio does appreciate. Uh, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but man, for an 18 to 23 year old kids, they've got humble spirits and they do it right. Coach, you uh, hired a general manager for the first time in program history here. What does that position mean? And I guess, what was why was there a need for that here? First, I think it's a compliment to Kevin Brown. I mean, I think I, I put too many hats on Kevin. and. Uh, Probably what drove him out of here. Uh, but when we, him and I started together, this wasn't what it was, right? And three years later, uh, NIL's here, transfer portal's here. We're trying to raise money to, to get lights. We're trying to raise money to build an indoor. We're trying to raise money for nutrition. We're trying to raise money just for what it takes to get a young program off the ground and running, right? And that all came in, then NIL came in, and transfer portal came in. And I just felt like I was spreading myself too thin and for sure spreading Kevin too thin. Uh, Andrew Acosta uh, was one of my players, uh, worked as a volunteer for a year, became the assistant DFO, and uh, I've just given him all of the DFO responsibility. And I've taken the part off of Kevin's job, which is now Mike, where he's gonna help me with the boosters. He's gonna help me manage my roster. He's gonna help me manage my staff. Um, He'll still handle budget issues with, uh, with, with Mike Bazemore and those type of situations. But just basically splitting that job uh, and let Andrew, who's still very much involved in a lot of that, but he's handling all the ops. Uh, and we still got like uh, Hoshua, Joshua, he was a volunteer for us. We gotta find a way to get him on staff because we're gonna need him to help in all this. It's just the job's getting big. Uh, we're going to the AAC. I mean, this thing doesn't fool around. They're not going to say, hey, UTSA, we're going to give you a couple of years to get warmed up to us. Y'all get time to grow. They're going to go out there and try to stone our heads, right? And I don't want to be a part of that stoning. So we're, we're trying to be proactive as possible here and, and, and get in there where there's no drop off. Because I know our fan base is not going to hold a sign up saying, feel sorry for Coach Trailer. He needs a couple of years to get warmed up for the AAC they're going to just be crushing my head as well. Coach, how has Malachi Hart folks coming back from injury and what have you responded mentally to having this extra year now that he uh, probably didn't think he would have? Yeah, I, I think it's been tough on him, honestly, for all these kids that are back. There's like seven of them that are back that weren't supposed to be back. I think all of them, because in their minds, they'd already put themselves somewhere else, right? So that, that is difficult. And uh, I'm trying to help them through all that. I really am. Uh, I get it. Y'all get tired of hearing my stories, right? Imagine those poor rascals. Y'all only got to deal with me a little bit each day. They got to deal with me, you know, three hours a day. And God bless them. I, I don't know how many starters we have that have been playing for me for going on year four now. And uh, that's a long time to listen to this old country boy. I saw a couple of coaches from UT RGV here. That's a new starter program. What did it mean to see those guys out here? Yeah, Coach Bush has been a friend of mine. You know, he helped me. Uh, you know, he was on the original staff here with Kevin. So he's been really good for me, just talking to him about San Antonio. And I'm glad I can help him back a little bit. Brian Gambles from East Texas, his brother coach with me. Uh, Lance, we want to stay championship together. And uh, those guys are always welcome here. Uh, we, we don't generally let any college coaches in here, honestly. Uh, we're, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty particular about that. But, those two guys, I've been around for a long time, and uh, they're welcome here. Jeff, do you see Demetrius Allen getting back to full speed by the end of spring, or is that more looking ahead to the fall? Yeah, that's a good question. We're not sure yet. We're, well, we think he could be. We're just being smart. I mean, again, Meach is one of those guys. He's been here since I've been here and played a lot of valuable football for me. And I'm just trying to – being careful, being cautious, just to, and those other guys need the reps. But I'd say it's – if I've wanted to push him, there's a, there's a few of them out there. If I pushed them, they could go right now. I just don't see the sense in it. How does that impact the competition for that left tackle spot, potentially? Who's in the mix there? I, I would say we'd settle that in fall. I mean, we won't have that settled in spring. Uh, 
we feel good. Y'all, y'all seen how I coach? I'll, we've we've subbed linemen. We're, we're probably the only school in the country that subs linemen like right in the middle of a series. We'll, we'll send three or four more out there. We're gonna play them. If they show me they know the playbook, they can play. I'm putting them out there. And uh, so I don't. It's not necessarily who starts the game for us. I know that matters. If you're in the two deep for me, there's a good chance you're gonna get minutes. Do you want to specialize certain guys more at guard or tackle, whether it's Benley or Payne? Like, where do you see those two potentially landing more often? I, again, I think it's valuable that both those guys have played tackle. You can always move them back inside, but I think that's gonna be a great benefit for us. Uh, you know, we got really hamstrung last year, but Frankie's still out there, and Daniel, and Buffalo, and uh, Walker can go out there as well. We're just we're trying to make them as multi-positional as purpose just because of, one, it's good for the team, but man, we've been really injury bitten in there for the last few years.